Okay, we have just dozens of really good questions. I apologize right now that I can't get through them. So I'm going to give you rapid fire questions. Let's see how many of these you can get answered in a, in a brief amount of time because they're really good. So hit it as fast and best as you can. <laughs> Excellent question. How do you explain the lack of accuracy in the apparent details of the resurrection narratives in each gospel? If they get plants, names, and places right, why not there also? Okay, with the resurrection accounts, one of the um, differences you have... That's good enough to go slow on this one. Go ahead. Okay, um, is, you know, how many angels, one or two? Where were the angels? Uh, were they inside the tomb, outside the tomb? Was it dark? Was it light? Uh, you know, th those are the sorts of differences you have. Which, which women were exactly there? What, what's the order in which things happened? Well, I think, looking at the resurrection accounts, that there were at least six women who went to the tomb, okay? Right? Six women. You add up the names, and, you know, and it says all the others, you know, in Luke, that there, there are at least six women. Guess what? I don't think six women simultaneously go inside a tomb. Okay, they don't have to move on block all the time. So what I believe, again, is what we've got is basically eyewitness reports and each of these things is from a different perspective of a different woman. And so one might have gone inside, one was outside. And, you know, people say, well, what about, you know, do, well, are angels allowed to move? You know, um, so I, I, that would be my basic explanation. The other thing I'd say is the differences between the accounts show that they don't result from collusion. Um, so that to me is a very striking thing. And I also want to say that there are some features of the accounts. For instance, that whenever they see angels or men, they're wearing bright clothes, but they do not see Jesus dazzling. None of them. So they've got features across them that, that are common, but they've got other things. The other thing is, think about the variety of resurrection accounts. You've got resurrection accounts in the morning, the afternoon, indoors, outdoors, country, town, Galilee, Judea, up a hill and by a lake. You know, on a road, standing, sitting, walking, talking, eating. You know, there's such a variety. Those things coming together with all the differences. I just think, overwhelm me with a sense that this really happened. Next question. What do you think of the new NIV update? I haven't looked at it, but I'm boss of one person on it. Um, so, and I taught one of the other, other people in Hebrew, so I, I can't say anything too bad. But I'm, I've got to declare an interest because I'm on the ESV translation uh, committee. So what I'd say is the best Bible to use is the one that you use a lot. <laughs> okay. okay, this next question, um, I'm going to read it. But anybody who wants to know the answer, instead of taking Peter's time with this, though you might have a different perspective and, and I'd love to do it, I would direct you to Florentino Garcia Martinez for this question because he answered this yesterday at lunch with a profound answer that was just moving to me. He said, uh, or here's the question. Uh, in a, um, all four Gospels appear as sophisticated theological treatises full of Old Testament allusion, well-developed narratives, and a plethora of discernible motifs. How did untrained, ordinary men produce these documents? And Florentino has got a great answer for what was actually in existence in the mind of the people at the time that we've only learned about through the Dead Sea Scrolls, and that many of these issues, God had prepared the soil for Jesus. He can tell you that, but do you have anything to add? Well, uh, what about with... <laughs> What about with God's help? Yes. Is that okay? Amen. Yeah. The dates of the Gospels are accepted to be from 65 to 95 current era. Jesus died 30 current era. How old are the eyewitnesses? Was there a well-developed oral tradition passed on by skilled memorizers and reciters? Could this fill the gap of airmen? Yeah. I only date my wife. Um, so, uh, no, I, don't have, I don't have particular dates for the Gospels. Um, my, my interest is in showing the quality of material. So, I mean, I, I would go along with the traditional idea that John was one of the last Gospels to be written. The fact that it's last doesn't make it least reliable. I, I think what we're dealing with is things that are all within one lifetime of, of the events. And, and so that's, to me, the really significant thing. Uh, years, you know, if you read in a study Bible that this is the year that a gospel is written, you know, that figure is plucked from the air, however learned the person who wrote it is. What does John mean? The name John? 
Uh, John means uh, the Lord has mercy. Yo Hanan. Yo is the bit from Lord, the special and divine name, Hanan, mercy. Why did the gospel writers wait so long to write their gospels? Or are the times in the NIV study Bible way off? <laughs> Well, I don't, want to say, I don't want to say anything against the NIV Study Bible, but there is a, a new NIV Study Bible in preparation. So you, um, I, I would say, again, uh, they, they may well have waited a while. No, seriously, um, that at first, uh, the, the, the stories about Jesus, I think, are being taught, uh, you know, on a Sunday basis. People are telling lots of stories, and, and they're getting uh, well, well known. Um, and often you find that conveying things orally is more efficient than making them known by books. Uh, and I think so it, it, you could explain why people wouldn't initially use books. Okay, last three quick questions. Um, do you agree with the idea that Matthew, Mark, and Luke might have relied on a Q document for their textual similarities? The theory is that not Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but Matthew and Luke have common material. And one explanation is that they both used Mark and they both use something else. And scholars just give it the name Q, okay? Um, that's a reasonable theory. It's not a theory I oppose. Uh, it's a theory about which I am fiercely agnostic. And do you offer an alternative explanation for those who might be fiercely opposed looking for an, uh, 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 some rationale? I mean, I think I can show the sort of material we got across the four Gospels um, uh, ha a high quality, whether, whether uh, it's uh, stuff that only Matthew has, only Luke has, things where there's an overlap, uh, I think some of these features we can show across all of them. Is there one gospel more than the other three that skeptics believe is not true, and why? Um, people are pretty skeptical about quite a bit of John's gospel. So, sometimes with Luke and Matthew, people tend to trust Mark more because the general theory is that Mark came first. Um, John is also quite different from the others, but John, in a lot of ways, is more specific, you know, on questions of, 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 of dating, hours of the day, some of the customs. And there's a lot of things that really show the author has to know the, the time and place. Okay, this question has absolutely nothing to do with anything you've said tonight, but it is such an obscure question of the oh, Greek that I'm going to ask it just to see if you can do it cold. Great. <laughs> In Ephesians 2, mm -hmm. 8 through 9, yeah. does the pronoun that refer to faith or saved? Um, the word faith is feminine. Uh, and uh, the word that I think is neuter, um, uh, and so uh, it doesn't seem grammatically to go with it. But the point is, salvation comes from God. Thank you very much. And with that, Peter, thank you.